Welcome back to Carfection. You join me in my uh, small studio in a room at home because obviously at the moment we can't go out. Perhaps you're watching this uh, further down the line when we are on some sort of nirvana, the other side of coronavirus. But for now, much as I would rather be out on some mountain road or standing in a forest watching a rally car go past, um, I thought I would transport you to some of these places via some of my favourite shots from the films that we've shot in the past few years. So these are not whole films necessarily, but just individual things that at the time, perhaps I've seen it in the edit, perhaps it was at the time we thought, oh, we'll plan this and try like that, perhaps it was a, a happy accident. But yes, let's get into it. This is the very first shot that I ever did with Carfection, so it was about three years ago now, and it was the launch of the McLaren 570S Spider. I hadn't really met Charlie before, who was doing the filming, and we lost a load of equipment on the way out there. So it was filmed, uh, the launch was in Barcelona, and we got to the airport, and sure enough, one of the big bags didn't turn up. I think it was the tripods and clamps and things like that. So not completely crucial, but uh, for doing things like statics, it was a bit tricky. Not an ideal start, it has to be said. Anyway, we went to some roads, which i had known from before, and it's a place called Montserrat, so it's just to the west of Barcelona, inland a bit. And if you're thinking, Montserrat, surely that's, that's an island, isn't it? Well, no, the island got its name from this place, and it's very mountainous with these curious sort of rounded rocks. And in fact, there's a monastery up there, which I have stayed in the sort of the hotel part of the monastery. I didn't know it was attached to a monastery when I booked the rooms and being woken up for morning prayers at about 5am by the tolling of the bell was not a rude awakening, but an unexpected one. Anyway, I digress. The shot. It is right at the start of the film. So first shot we ever shot and at the start of the film. And as you can see, see the track up behind, I'm going to pause it there for a second, because you can see the track that we had to drive down in a supercar, which is kind of, you know, not ideal, but that's what happens sometimes. We have to take cars to inappropriate locations to get the shots. And you can see the mountains in the background, but what happens, this shot, it's all one continuous shot. And we shot using a Ronin, so Charlie's shooting with a camera on the gimbal, walking around the car. And it's just an idea we came up with. I can't remember why I thought of it, but I must have seen something somewhere else taking inspiration for it. And it looks like, oh, it's just the car. We're circling around it, there's nobody there. And then at this point now, bingo. I walk into a shop. So it was sort of my introduction to car affection, I suppose. And then I had to open the door, get into the car. And this is the tricky bit, getting into a car, not making a complete horlicks of it. So you lean on the sill, pull it down and deliver the line to camera. Bingo. So there we are. It's quite a long continuous shot for Charlie to have to do over uneven ground with the gimbal in his hand. And obviously I had to time it absolutely right. We did it in about two or three takes, I think. But it was one of those shots that I just thought, do you know what? I'm really pleased with the way that turned turned out. On to the next shot. Ah, now, this was something that I'd wanted to do for a very long time. This is from the film that we did with the Rolls-Royce Dawn. Now, this was a film with a punchline, which is a bit risky, really, because most things on YouTube, I think you're meant to sort of pile it all towards the front, hook people in, don't lose their attention. And this was all about the idea that uh, the Rolls-Royce Dawn was the only one of the Rolls-Royces you couldn't have with the starlit headlining with the little filaments, LED filaments in it uh, to make it look like you were looking at a starlit uh, night sky. So we took it somewhere that you could see a proper night sky and take the roof down. You see what I mean. But we had to go through the rest of the film to get there. So if you didn't really like the Rolls-Royce Dawn and you thought, oh, this is just a normal sort of review, then you might not have got to the end of the film and seen the shots that it was all about. And it was quite a tricky shoot because originally we were going to go up to Dumfries and Galloway in Scotland because that's, I think, the, the best dark sky site in the UK. But at the time we wanted to film, typically the time we had the car in, uh, that was cloudy or rainy or something else. So we ended up going down to Cornwall and Bodmin Moor. And again, if you look at this, so we go to this here, you can see, <laughs> again, not really the sort of place you want to be driving a Rolls Royce, to be honest, a slightly rough track. And I had to reverse down there in the dark, but we spent two nights out there, 
So all the shots you see there are the process of a couple of nights. So it took a long time to get this relatively short segment in the film, but it's kind of what makes the film. And I particularly love the shot at where you sort of, it's the first one we do really, where you're inside the car and you can see the star trails going over the top. They took about, I think, three or four hours to get each time. And so obviously set several up at once, but we did it two nights in a row. And uh, George and I were in the, and Andrew Hall, in fact, he was taking some lovely photographs at the same time. We all just went and sat in the um, Discovery Sport and tried to fall asleep with all the kit and just left the car out there with all the cameras going. So there we are. Yeah, love those shots. Please do go and have a look at those if you haven't seen them before. Next, this is a sideways shot on a track. <laughs> this is the uh, Lotus Esprit Sport 300, which was shot in the depths of winter on a very wet day at Lotus on their Hethel test track, which is perhaps not the most glamorous sort of location, but it's very useful and it's got some really, really good corners on it. This one, it is sort of second or third gear, depending uh, what car you're in, whether it's wet, whether it's dry, all those sorts of things. This was second gear in the Esprit and I, I like seeing cars in slow-mo, particularly if they're, if they're moving, you can just see how they're reacting. You get to sort of appreciate it a bit more. It's, it's very nice at full speed as well, but I like this sideways shot because it's an old car. The angle's right because it's just so wedgy and it's sort of, you see how aggressive it is and, and, and low it is. And the slide, well, he doesn't like a sideways shot. And it's nice because it's not super leery, but there's enough lock on there to see that it's it's clearly sideways and from a personal perspective as well um, I've managed to hook up just on the edge of the curb and then just follow it round that line of the curb so aesthetically to me I like it there we are so there's a bit of slow mo sideways in there as well the other shot actually in there which I'll come back to in a second because we're going to move on to Another film that was full of loads of sideways, and this is actually an interior driving shot, um, but it was something that wasn't planned at the time, as opposed to the start of the Esprit film I've just mentioned, which was. So if we go back to the Esprit film, the start of that, we're in a modern um, Evora, in fact, and I went out and literally had two laps, bunged a uh, camera on the driver's side window there because I thought we could match it up with the old car then, so it was a nice sort of transition, so you're going back in time and uh, Benjamin Cornish, who was filming that, did a really, really nice job of just matching the two together. And uh, it was quite funny actually just going out, literally going, right, uh, end of the day, what are we gonna do? Well, turn everything off on this Evora, we'll go sideways, it'll make a cool intro. And thankfully it did. And it was basically on the lock stops, lock stops from the first lap. So there we are. But that then is different to the McRae film, a film I love doing, so much fun to do. Um, we wanted a lot of historic footage at the start just to sort of build it up, really sort of emphasise the McRae element of the car. And George did a lovely job in the editing of this, whereby he obviously found basically the same angle. And it was complete fluke because it wasn't something that we had planned. We hadn't seen the shot before and thought, oh, we'll recreate that. It just happened that way. And the way it goes from the original car, or uh, well, the original footage, into modern footage we shot. So and it's like, it really is, it's me playing at being McRae and that's just pretty cool i think so i was that was a lovely thing that i didn't know was going to happen so when i first saw the edit come through george sent it across i sat there and went wow that's really cool so i enjoyed that next we have a db11 in andorra this was one of the first sort of adventure trips we did uh, with car affection so charlie came along and in fact sam riley was there as well and dean smith came along to do some photos and we took a car off it wasn't without its troubles. I think, again, Charlie had actually lost a load of equipment that just hadn't got delivered on the flight. Um, so we went out there. The weather was atrocious most of the time. It was all over the place. And at the, towards the end of it, we got a puncture. And it was up towards Padre la Casa. And we went and sat in a restaurant for a while and had some hot chocolate and things like that. And I remember it was um, towards the end of the year, so it must have been September time-ish. But we were waiting for this spare wheel and tire to turn up in Andorra and Dean took out his drone started flying it around and the shots were just amazing something to do with just a little bit of snow 
the first snow of the year being up on these mountains and the wispy clouds and what a cool shot of the mountains. No car in it at all, but just one of those shots you think, wow, that is amazing. And it's followed up with another drone shot, in fact, on a different road that we went to and you get a little bit of sun flare, car going around the corner and yeah, drone shots like that are just so cool. In fact, that leads me into the next shot, which is on the BMW Z4 M40i. Now you have to go, again, a bit like the Rolls Royce Dawn, it's all the way at the end of the film, this shot. In fact, the credits are coming up at this point and there's some cool sort of Bond music and stuff. And it was on a, a road um, called Alto de Velafique. Alto de Vela. Velafique, Southern Spain. Let's go with that. And it was a big sort of reveal of all the hairpins down there. A bit of music, sort of, say, a bit James Bond-esque, which Charlie found for this. And then the shot after that, which circles round a big hairpin. And this was with a new Mavic 2 zoom. And it was one of those things that we just thought, you know what, finally we can get shots that look... It looks like a helicopter shot to me. It really does. The quality is amazing. And it's just... Helicopters are something that television could always do that we couldn't afford to do with a YouTube video, basically. And now the drones are good enough and the cameras are good enough on that that we can do shots like that, which is pretty amazing, I think. One final drone shot, because it's cool, is in fact at Castle Coombe, and it was from a short plus film that we did on drifting an E63S wagon and the drift mode in that. And I hate the term drift mode it just all it does is it makes it rear wheel drive and turns all the controls off so it's not like the focus rs drift mode which is all a bit weird this is just proper no aids rear wheel drive and it was a shot i didn't know the drone was up there at the time i think it would just happen to be in that bit of the circuit pointing the right way i came around this long corner with the um, rear tires bonfiring at the time and it looks really cool so there we are there's another another drone shot that i i happen to really like so this final shot is something then completely different. So we've gone away from drones to a static shot. And this was on the Bentley Continental GT film that we shot in Scotland. In fact, we shot most of it a couple of days beforehand. And then we did something with the BAC Mono as well, uh, which was up there and Drew was driving that. And then we knew we needed this end shot to make the whole sort of conceit that I come up with about it being a tenuous link to it being in Scotland or something like that. And I'd bought a whiskey glass with me. And so we thought, well, we'll end it outside the distillery. And we happened to find the perfect shot. And it's really difficult doing nighttime stuff because you need light from outside the car generally, um, or you do have to do really long exposure stuff like we did with the Rolls Royce Dawn. And this just happened to be absolutely perfect. It was exactly what we needed. And I love the look of it. It looks really beautiful because you can see inside the distillery and see the big copper stills inside. I see that copper. And it's just something that really appeals to me from an aesthetic point of view and we were lucky with the lighting so there we are those are a few of my favorite shots um i hope you enjoyed that if you didn't let me know if you did give it a thumbs up and if there are other shots you'd like to see perhaps understand how we did them then i'm sure we'll get charlie on at some point because he'll pick different things he'll pick things that are technically much much better i'm sure but yeah for now thank you very much and cheerio